Well, here it is. My first extracted tooth. So as I said, this was my first extraction ever. So let me run you through the emotions that I went through and the whole story of how we got to this point where I finally got my first extraction. Let's go. On this sad cloudy day, I came into uni once again, feeling down. My patient had cancelled once again. So I walked into the room just to observe another extraction, someone else doing it. But as I walked into the classroom, a fourth year student brought in a case for extraction, which was considered to be too complex for fourth year students uh, to carry out. So, so the teacher went around the room asking questions to everybody about how to do this specific extraction. It was on the lower right molar tooth. And eventually after about five minutes of questioning, he decided that today I would do the extraction as he felt that I was prepared most for the specific tooth. So I put on my gloves and we got to the extraction. So the first thing I did on my patient was to check for pain on percussion and then we checked for inflammation around the tooth area as well. Then we checked for tooth mobility and we determined that it was actually just a grade 1 mobility so it wasn't a very mobile tooth. The tooth in question was the LR6 or the lower right 6 tooth which is the mandibular first molar. So in this case we decided on three different types of anesthesia. The inferior alveolar nerve anesthesia, which anesthetizes the inferior alveolar nerve that travels through the mandibular canal, like that. The lingual nerve anesthesia and the long buccal nerve anesthesia. Now with all these three types of anesthesia, we would make sure that all the areas surrounded that tooth would be anesthetized, so there's no way that they would feel any kind of pain. So let's get on with how we did that. So to find the point of insertion for the inferior alveolar nerve anesthesia, I palpated with my thumb the medial and lateral oblique ridges of the mandible and found the coronoid notch. This determines the height of the point of insertion, which is basically midway through your thumb. Next was to find the exact point of insertion. So now we know the height of insertion. So the point of insertion is a few centimeters medially to the thumb. So I took my injection and angled it towards this point of insertion from the contralateral canines and inserted until bony contact. Then I withdrew slightly, aspirated and then started injecting the carpule. We inject about two thirds of the carpule and that is it for the inferior alveolar nerve anesthesia. Now for the lingual nerve anesthesia, we can either anesthetize it on the way out from the inferior alveolar nerve anesthesia just by continuing injecting while we are um, removing the injection. Okay, but before that I wanted to anesthetize the long buccal nerve. So for this, I withdrew the needle and injected parallel to the occlusal plane, distal to the second molar on the cheek in order to anesthetize the long buccal nerve. Okay, so we're done with the long buccal nerve. I grabbed a new carpool and now it was time to anesthetize the lingual nerve. So for the lingual nerve anesthesia, I injected about one cc, seven millimeters below uh, the second molar in the gingiva from the contralateral canine and this anesthetized the lingual nerve. Then I removed the injection and just waited for about five or so minutes for the injection to kick in so the patient doesn't feel anything. Normally the patient knows uh, and they'll let you know. So the patient can't feel anything and now it's time to begin the first step of extraction. Syn desmotomia. Syn desmotomia. This is the process of separating the tooth from the periodontal ligaments and the gingiva, basically making the tooth a little bit looser. So earlier we discovered that the tooth only had grade one mobility, which is a slight more movement buccolingually, so it isn't a lot. In this case, we need to carry out syndesmotomia, which in very simple terms means separating the tooth from the periodontium. So for this step, all I did is I grabbed my forceps, closed them so they're stuck together, and then went all around the tooth in a strong motion going apically and then going across. In this motion, you will actually feel the periodontal ligaments tearing and that's when you know you're doing a correct job. You see the gingiva become a bit looser and the tooth becomes a little bit more mobile. So once the desmotomia is done, we grab a gauze or we call it marli in Bulgarian and then we take off all the blood around the tooth just so we have a better visibility. And now it's time to use the straight hand elevator. So now we're done with the syndesmotomia part of extraction, it's time for luxation. Luxation basically means the loosening and removing of a tooth. So how do we start this? In my case, I started it by using a straight hand elevator. I inserted the straight hand elevator into the mesial aspect of the tooth as far apically or closer to the root as it would go and activated the straight hand elevator so the working end was on the tooth and the other side was facing bone, not the adjacent tooth because we don't want any loose teeth. Now the motion for this was a rotatory motion like this 
and that slowly helps scoop up the tooth. If you can see here, the tooth has a specific contour in the root which goes like that. As we're extracting, we wanna make sure we're following that contour. So by inserting it into the mesial aspect, because the roots curve distally, so imagine this, I insert the straight hand elevator into the mesial aspect and rotate like this. If the tooth is curved this way, it comes out like that with any, without any sort of fracture. So that is what we were aiming for. So I inserted the straight hand elevator, did my rotatory movements, and I could feel the tooth starting to get looser and looser. Okay, once the tooth was really loose, I could push it up a little bit more, but it wasn't fully coming out. So the nurse handed me the next thing, the, molar, the mandibular molar forceps, which looks like this. Now I grabbed the molar forceps and held it with proper positioning. It's basically like this. The forcep goes on top of your hand and your hand goes underneath. Okay, so I got this plier at home because I can't find an actual mandibular forceps, but let's pretend that this is it. So, so you hold it like this basically and you place this area onto the actual tooth for extraction. In this case, because of the fact that there are two teeth and the curvature of the teeth, I couldn't really do some crazy sort of movements and rotations. We had to think very specifically about what we were going to do to extract this tooth. It was already a little bit looser because of the elevator, but still we need to be careful. So what I did with this tooth is I grabbed it with the forceps and I moved it medially. So we did this sort of motion with it. So I held the tooth with the mandibular forcep and I made sure that the beak of uh, the forcep was as apically as possible. So closest to the root as possible. Now we hold on to the tooth very firmly and move it medially. Bring it back to the middle, medially, back to the middle. Now why do we move only medially? This is because... The buccal cortical plate for the mandibular molar is very thin around this region and we don't want to move the tooth buccally and end up breaking the buccal cortical plate because that will be a whole other issue. So we move the tooth medially, meaning towards the tongue basically in this case. During this process, what are we trying to achieve? We're trying to expand the socket in order to extract the tooth easily. Now with actual extraction, you don't just grab the tooth and pull it up. We actually move it side to side. This helps expand the socket. So we keep on moving the tooth medially back to the middle, medially back to the middle. And as you keep doing this, you'll notice that the tooth starts feeling looser and looser. And as it starts feeling looser and looser, the tooth starts coming upwards and upwards, so of by itself. And you naturally feel like you need to apply a little bit of more pressure upwards. You don't just yank it out. It's a slow pressure medially and then upwards, medially upwards. And you keep going like that until the tooth is really loose. And that final push, you will know when the moment is right. I grabbed onto the tooth, moved it immediately one more time, moved it up a little bit and I could feel it coming out. Now because of the curvature of the tooth going like that, instead of just going medially and then straight up, I went medially and then as I was pulling it up, slightly lingually, just to accommodate for that curve of that tooth. So I went slightly lingually and out came the tooth. Ladies and gentlemen, extraction successful. We made it. Oh my God, the feeling of when you finally take that tooth out and you feel the periodontal ligament stare and the, and you finally done the extraction, there is no other feeling like it. The, the adrenaline was crazy and the experience was amazing, but there's no time to relax. We've just done an extraction and there's a wound in the mouth, there's still blood all around. So what's the next step to do after you have done luxation? So we had syndesmotomia, luxation, and now curatage. This is basically when we remove all of the granulated tissue that's still left there in the socket. We use a curette and in a scooping motion, remove all of the granulated tissue until you can feel smooth bone and smooth gingiva around it. We've done the curatage. The next step is to slightly massage the gingiva with our fingers. Why do we do this? Because remember earlier we said we want to expand the bone around the tooth so we can extract it. Now we need to contract the bone to bring it back to its actual shape. You literally do that with your fingers, it's just a little bit of palpation. Okay, so we brought the socket back to its correct shape. What's the next step? This is the final and the easiest step. Put in a gauze and ask the patient to bite down for, you know, about a minute or two. By then, the bleeding will have stopped. We can remove the gauze and give them some to take home. Give them some advice on what uh, they need to do after an extraction. By the way, video on what you need to do after an extraction coming soon so hit that subscribe button that video will be coming soon but yeah it's an amazing feeling see that board right over there i wrote all of my year goals on there and i have finally crossed off the extraction point that's one more year goal complete another one of my year goals is to get to 1000 subscribers this year so guys if you haven't subscribed hit that subscribe button we're really close and i would really appreciate every single one of you that hits that button my name is Suji Densad. thank you for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video.